One of the, uh, in addition to the educational program, one of the really uh, important parts of the Strelke Institute initiative is, uh, is the publishing initiative. And earlier this year, uh, we published a quite amazing book, actually probably my favorite book of, of last year by our friends uh, Matt Haven, that was about many other, about among many other things, um, mobile cinema, or perhaps rather, what happens when cinema becomes mobile, or rather, when mobility becomes cinematic and especially what sorts of time this draws out. I hope that's fair. So in relation to the city, we, might, we may normally think of cinema as a kind of building, uh, a big camera obscura that you enter with a paid ticket and watch images on the far wall. But the relation between cinema and the city is always changing. Uh, and the relation is always historically fraught. Walter Benjamin compared films to cities and in doing so described architecture as a distracted medium. Since then, various prophets against the spectacle denounced the impact of the image on urban psychology. Sometimes though, we get cinematic works that inquire into the potential future of cinema itself as, through asking the question, what might be the relationship between that future cinema and the city? For example, in 1989, um, having been given an early digital video camera, Wim Wenders made the film Notebook on Cities and Clothes. This was a different kind of camera, one based not on a strip, but on a chip. What would be its new relationship to the city, he asked. It's a good question to ask about this new thing, a digital camera. His answer is that it would be about clothing. You would wear the city through the digital cinema and vice versa. And so he took his new camera to interview Yoji Yamamoto, who knew a lot about wearing things. And we do, in fact, wear our cinema now in the city, as the city, in our hand, or on our face. This next project, Current, is also cinema about the future of cinema. A work that tries to visualize, not to try to visualize the future in general, as sci-fi movies might, but the moving image visualizing its own future as the moving image. Today, however, the new camera is the new chip that is up in the cloud. Massive GPU render farms making cinema over there that we see over here. But Vendor's question remains, what is the relationship between this new cinema and the city? So maybe think of what you see here as something like uh, YouTube 2025. It will be a convergence of four key plateauing trends, as they will explain. First, of live streaming, how people and things perform real-time feeds demonstrating their identity and reality. Second, a volumetric cinema, like for video games, for perhaps VR, where navigation through space takes over from the edited cut to structure film form. Third, artificial intelligence, how GP, uh, uh, GPUs making new images out of the raw goop of digital bits. Maybe fake, maybe not, maybe deep, maybe not, but AI authored for sure. And finally, a, and a pers personalization. Finally, as the cinema is produced in real time, it is just for you. There is only one movie. The only movie is the one that you want to watch right now. So here is one movie's idea about what that movie will look like, current. Hi. 
Um, I'm Provides. I'm an architect from Hong Kong. Hi, I'm Mary, an art director and designer from Moscow. Hi, I'm Yanzi, an artist. Hi, uh, I'm Eli Jotiva. I'm an artist from Bulgaria, uh, and I'm based in Los Angeles. And we are the current team. We would like to introduce you to a speculation on the future of broadcasting cinema. To do this, we will present two films, one comprised of our research, and the second one, a more experiential uh, design proposal for what this cinematic experience might look and feel like. In order to redefine a cinema, we first take a brief look at the history of cinema. We take into great consideration of the Russian history of cinema. First, the one take, no cut of the Lumia Brother production. Second, the montage of the Russian experiments. Third, especially the expanded cinema movement from the 60s. We are taking those ideologies, incorporating them into our four core ideas. First, AI optimization. Second, infinite live stream. Third, volumetric cinema. And fourth, personalization. So our project depicts how these interact. With the invention of live stream, we collected a lot of mundane moments, and it allows everyone to be a producer. It collapses the line of authorship between viewer and producer. With volumetric cinema, it enables us to collect all those data and depict it in a 3D space, shifting from a traditional frame to frame into a world to world navigation of nonlinear narrators. And at the same time, AI optimization recommend contents and mesh them together, project it to you. This gives us our fourth idea of personalization. So, with this, we present to you first our research video. Please enjoy.
开放的中国加速度，看到了将改革开放进行到底的中国决心。我们改革的脚步不会停滞，开放的大门只会越开越大。很多港澳台居民拿到了居住证，香港进入了全国高铁网，一个流动的中国。充满了繁荣发展的活力。无论国际风云如何变幻，中国维护国家主权和安全的信心和决心不会变；中国维护世界和平、促进共同发展的诚意和善意不会变。我们将积极推动共建“一带一路”，继续推动构建人类命运共同体，为建设一个更加繁荣美好的世界而不懈努力。到来，祝福中国。